Eight to ten is what I counted. Guys, antelope. We are back. We didn't know if we were gonna make it back, but this is that antelope, my archery antelope tag we have. Today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, to try to get a goat with my bow. We were just pulling out to where we left off, actually, and I looked out and I saw one. I started glassing, and then, like I said, there's eight to ten. All of them are laying down except for one. It's gonna be a little different hunting style. Well, not different style. I think the goats are gonna be doing more rutting now than last time. It's been about a week and a half. Uh, I felt like right when we got to leave, the bucks were definitely starting just to get interested in the does. We were watching them do some scrapes. Um, not really doing much chasing yet, but they were getting interested in it. And I think they're probably gonna be rutting pretty hard or getting ready to rut pretty hard. So I don't know, that makes it a little more difficult to kill an antelope. My thoughts are the best time to kill an antelope would be early in this season, like for middle of August when, is when this opens, when the bucks are still together and they're really concentrated on water because it's really hot and dry. I think that's your best time. Unfortunately, we don't have that. We have the end of the hunt and it's gonna be more eyeballs. We're gonna be stocking with more eyeballs. I think the water's a little more spread out. They have gotten some rain out here in the last couple weeks. Um, but we do have some new toys to try out. And when I say toys, I mean decoys. We have three decoys and a blind. So no holds bars. Like we're gonna do anything we can to kill an antelope on, on this hunt. I really wanna try to kill a goat with my bow. We got close last time, a couple times. And I think just something, I have a, a decoy that attaches to my bow. And when we got the closest was when we had goats with a little bit of topography, they would be on a hill. And we'd stay at the base of the hill and we'd try to sneak up. It seemed like right when we'd sneak up and they'd see, see us, they'd obviously take them off. But if I have that decoy on my bow, it might be enough to just hold them there long enough to, for me to draw back, set them with my pin in and get a shot off. But we're just gonna go set up camp and then we're gonna get changed and we're gonna run out and start doing some hunting. Let's try to get this thing done today if we can. got a uh, the old jumping jack thrown up got camp set um, we have a couple ideas of where we want to start tonight's gonna be kind of observation to see you know just in comparison to what we saw before on our first trip over here compared to now I, like I said earlier I think some things might have changed but we have one spot we really want to go check that we actually had goats in there they are right there um, they are just on the edge of private that's that goat we chased last time same one He's pretty consistently always right there. Right here somewhere. He has lots of eyeballs with him. That's gonna be hard. Anyway, we got this one spot we had goats on. Uh, it's where the bo big box blind was. I asked you guys last time if, so I didn't want more research. It is 100% legal for you to go and sit in somebody else's blind. Is that something that you would do? It's legal, but do you feel okay with that? So if you spent the time going out and putting your box blind out, you know, putting a camera out and then show up and have some guy, random guy sitting in it, which is, like I said, it's legal, you'd probably be pretty frustrated. So flip that, you come across the box blind, literally goats on the spring, the box blind's on. We never saw a truck, like we went and tried to investigate, like see if maybe somebody was sitting in it. And I wasn't even gonna sit in it, I was just gonna sneak up to, try to sneak up to the spring and shoot one of the goats. But I thought, well, if there's a guy in it that got dropped off because there's no trucks around, if a guy got dropped off, that would be a little weird. And I just didn't know how I felt about it. Anyway, I don't want to ruin somebody's hunt. We're hoping that guy killed uh, and his blind's gone and we can set out, actually set out our blind and see. But we're going to go ch take a look at that. And there's a couple other springs I want to go see. Um, another thing that's changed a lot is these cows might have gotten pushed around into different pastures, the cattle cows. Uh, 
because I want to, if I'm going to put a blind out, I want to put a blind out on a spring that there's no cattle on, so I can set out a stealth cam and see what antelope are hitting it and when they're hitting it, but I don't want to set a stealth cam if there's cattle living at it, because then you just get a bunch of pictures of cows. So those are the things we're going to go observe tonight, and who knows, maybe if we find a goat in the stock area, we'll go throw, throw our first stock on. We have about an hour and 30 minutes of shooting light, so we'll have just enough time to go check a couple spots out. Well, that answers that. Definitely a uh, blind is still there, camera's still on it, so somebody's probably actively hunting it or just haven't picked it up yet. Um, on to the next one. There's another spring I want to go check, maybe see if their cattle are off of it, and see what, this is where we've been seeing a lot of the antelope. I'm going to go see what they're doing, and then we'll go to the next one. And then tomorrow, we'll have a game plan of what we need to do. This is a good setup, because there's no, I don't think there's cows in here. Last time we were here, there's cows just living here. Which doesn't bother the goats, just sucks trying to trail cam animals when there's cows here 24 seven. But look at, yeah, goats everywhere. We have this great water source. I'll just post for the trail, trail cam up, and I think it's set the blind like right there. We're doing it. We're gonna do it, and we're gonna kill a goat off this tomorrow afternoon. So we'll give him a little time. This. <laughs> Chevy. Chevrolet. Chevy. <laughs> Any company. Dodgers are doing it now. Why would you put a mechanical Electric. tailgate? Electric tailgate. I think they should put a manual one on the back side. There she is. So dumb. starting to come in that we could switch it. So if I'm yeah. here, Logie. I'll probably be on your right side. You're here. 28, 29 yards. You see me? In the camera I can because the back door's open. Oh. But that's still pretty legit. If that back door's closed though, you won't be able to. What do you think? I think she's legit, dude. I think this is your best spot. What? I think it's the best spot for a blind. We're off the road. I think this has been had a blind on it because you can see these four T posts and there was wire wrapped around it. That's to keep the cows from bothering your blind because they definitely will come and rub up against it. But I don't think there's any cows in here. Well, I'm pretty I'm 99.9% .9 sure they're not. So now we're just gonna go put a camera on it and maybe hunt it in the morning or maybe just let it sit for a day and then come and give it a full day of this being here. Let the goats get used to it and then see what times they're coming in and uh, drinking. I think I think they were all coming to drink right now, which is about seven, just after seven. So we'll throw a trail cam up, see if they hit it tonight or tomorrow. And then I like it. So when I was at home, I did a lot of research about setting blinds on um, BLM land especially and uh, there's actually quite a few laws and regulations when it comes to setting blinds legally on BLM land I'll leave a link down below if you want to go look at it but one of the things I didn't know you had to do but you have to actually leave your name a card with your name and your zip code somewhere on your blind so BLM officer comes to check it out and there's maybe something legally been done with the blind he can check it and get your information so I'm gonna just wrote my name and zip code and I'm gonna put it inside the blind so we are legal also another thing I don't think a lot of guys know is you're not really allowed to, you're not supposed to cut down any brush or branches to try to hide your blind it does say you can legally cut some branches that might be in a shooting lane down but you're not supposed to get excessive with it so all very interesting and like we always say guys especially when you go to a new state or you're hunting a new creature or doing it by a new method that you're not 100 percent sure of do your research make sure you're legal make sure you're within the guidelines of 
not only the fishing game, but also of the different departments like the National Forest Service or the BLM or wherever you might be hunting. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this in there. We got two cams set now. We set one face this way because it's, it's actually a little creek. Of tracks, like right yeah, here. and there, I think the antelope not only are keying in on the water, but they're keying in on this green grass the water is creating. So we're gonna set a cam that way, and we got set a cam looking at the water itself. Uh, so good first day. Good. I mean, we only had an hour or so to go and do some observation, but I like what we saw. I like what like what we did. First option was definitely to go see if that ground or that box blind had been taken down which it has not camera was still on it so that's out of play we'll let them have that but we knew about this other spring i really liked because there's always antelope close by the problem with it before was there's a, a lot of cattle in order to set a set a blind or set a blind cattle like to rub up against things especially foreign objects so you go and set a blind cows are going to go rub on it and most likely destroy your blind and two it's hard to trail cam a place that has a lot of cattle in it what i like to do is a little tip is I just run my picture mode a little different. I'll do one picture like every 10 seconds. So you're not, and you'll still, you're gonna get a thousand pictures of cattle, but hopefully in the evening when the cattle leave to go feed, you'll get a picture of an elk or a deer or animal, whatever you're looking for. But it's still tough. So I like this spot, I just wanted to go check it. And thankfully the cows are out of there. Uh, there was still a pile of antelope, at least a hundred antelope around this spring. So we set uh, set the blind up, we liked it. There was a lot of tracks by the water. The only other downfall to this place, there was, if you guys saw, there was a water tank that was overflowing. And so it created a stream that was running down the road probably four or 500 yards. Antelope can probably drink out of any of that water running down the road. But what we noticed is there's a lot of green grass caused by that over uh, overflow of water. And the antelope are definitely keying in on that, that super green grass. It's really dry out here. That green grass has high protein. They know that, all the animals know that. So there was a ton of tracks right at the water hole, right close to where we set the blind. So we decided to set the blind, set two trail cameras, one facing the water, one facing down the, the little creek that, that it's been created. Uh, my only, uh, not fear, I think antelope will be on it for sure. But I don't wanna go sit it tomorrow because antelope are way wary. And so you put this new foreign object, which that blind blended in really well, but I guarantee you when they come into that for the first time and see that uh, blind, they're gonna be a little cautious. And if we're in there making noise and stuff, they're gonna get really spooky. So if we can just give them maybe a day to get used to that thing, and we have cameras on there so we can kind of tell, like we can see for sure what time they're coming in, mornings, afternoons, evenings, we're gonna have a good, good play. But I think in the morning, we're gonna go try to stalk some antelope. We saw some goats last time they're up here that I think we can go stalk. My truck's doing things right now. <laughs> anyway, so tomorrow we're gonna get up early, go spot and stock antelope, and maybe go check that. I don't. I, will, I wanna say I wanna leave it for a full day. Like not even go over that, or not even bother that area. Cause we have three solid days to hunt now. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And there's nobody out here. And so no far. one's out here, cows aren't in there. Luckily this hunt, the way it is set up, it, the last three days are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I think a lot of people pulled out today, being a Sunday, going back to work. We're gonna hunt Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of people out. So we're just gonna let that thing marinate for a day, go spot and stalk all day tomorrow, maybe kill one tomorrow. I, I have high hopes of doing that. I, would, I mean, I don't care. I shouldn't say I don't care. I would prefer to spot and stalk because it's so fun, but I really like sitting in a blind too. I want meat in the freezer at the end of the day. So we have some new toys, like I said, we have some decoys we're gonna try out. Um, we're gonna go, I got close last time. I think we can get close. I think we could do it this time. So we're gonna do, go do that tomorrow. If that doesn't pan out, Maybe tomorrow night after dark we go check that? I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. But all I know right now, um, this is elk. Wait, I wish I could say it was elk. <laughs> I got home from San Diego last night at about 12.30 and we left today at three. So you guys know me, I typically pre-make all of our food on a hunt. Uh, the last two times we've come out on, to antelope hunt, uh, Fred Meyer has prepped our food. So we were doing beef kebabs tonight. Dude. <laughs> San Diego and eating beef, bro. Who are you? <laughs> and I was at the club. No, I wasn't at the club. I was at a wedding. Um, it's pretty much a club. Yeah, so, yeah, it's weird being at a wedding in California in, uh, like, September 9th, September 10th, September 11th. Some of my favorite days would be in the Elk Woods. Anyway, we're going to eat well, sit by the fire for a little bit, and uh, make a plan for tomorrow and then get after it. I'm excited. I'm. I have this drive, like... I always have a drive to fill a tag or kill an animal, <clears throat> but I want to kill an antelope with my bow really, really bad for whatever reason. It's my first year ever trying it, so um, we're going to give it all, give, give it the gusto for the next three days.
It definitely feels like fall up here right now. It is chilly. It didn't freeze last night, but I bet it's pretty close to 40 degrees right now, which isn't ideal for our situation of wanting to shoot an antelope over our, our blind because they might not, not need water every, I don't know. All I know is I slept amazing last night. It feels amazing right now. It feels like September. I have an antelope tag in my pocket. I have my bow in the truck. And we're gonna go look for a stockable antelope today. I think we've decided that the blind we set on the spring last night, we're gonna let it sit for the day. Not gonna bother it. We're gonna go look for an antelope that is stockable. We're gonna put our, our toy decoys. Toy decoys, that sounds dumb. We're gonna put our decoys to the use. Tools. Our tools. I really wanna try it and see what see what the antelope, how the antelope respond to it. So we're gonna go look for some antelope, um, what they're doing, and uh, go put a stock on one. See how they react to it. A buck and a doe decoy coming in on. This watermelon is amazing though. Scaredy cats! <laughs> Goats are so funny, man. You can see them like off in the distance and they'll turn like wanting to get across the road and you can be driving down the road like 60 miles an hour and they will try to get over the road in front of you. It's like, what are you scared? You're scared of the truck go that way. They're like, no, I'm gonna get in front of you. And you, they literally will cross the road like 20 feet in front of you. So funny. We're just gonna put something to a test real quick. There's a group of antelope back down off the road. It's not too far off the road. I wanna try just to show them this and see what they do. Just to see how they react. So what I'm gonna do is have Logan be the driver. I'm gonna be the passenger. They're not in like the greatest stockable position, but they're in a position to see that. But I'm gonna have Logan drive by on the driver's side. So that'd be driver's side going back that way. I'll be on the, pass the passenger side. So I'm gonna have him slow down. And I'm just gonna step out and have him drive by, which they're gonna cue on Logan driving by. And then I'm gonna use this and just see because it's a buck and like three does. He's definitely trying to rut the does. So I'm just gonna step out and see how he reacts to that. What he does. I'm just gonna kind of walk towards him a little bit. Let's go see what, it, what happens. I would say he wasn't a fan. <laughs> I don't know if it was you stopping or me or this, but like I looked, they were like looking at me and then like kind of went back down doing what they were doing. Then I crossed the fence and I was looking down the fence. I looked up and they were just running as fast as they could away from me. <laughs> well, what I saw is dude, they were, he was rutting them parallel yeah. with the truck for like an, quite a ways. And then they stopped and they looked back and I kind of gunned it. And I was just over enough of a rise. I could not see you. So they ran a long way. <laughs> it didn't work. work. I want to try it a couple more times. Though. Yeah. I can't make friends. Kind of like bend over. Maybe you should try the dough one. Oh, there I'm gonna fix them. I'm gonna have friends now, mom. Am I making friends? I think so. I just wanna know, like, they don't appreciate the realistic eyeballs I bought separately. Look at those things. Look at that. I had to buy those separately and put them in. <laughs> and they're not appreciating that at all. Can't see exactly where Casey are, but there are antelope everywhere out there. Got a group there with a buck. Maybe two small bucks. That could be a doe behind them. Group there. Group running in from over there. None have an arrow. Uh, bedded doe. Go out there, Eden. That buck looks like he's gonna do something. Buck there. Antelope there. There. Antelope there. Another buck. But I don't see Casey anywhere. Goats everywhere. See, they're everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's goats. And when I was dropping Casey off, they were cutting across the road. So that buck we were going back after, they were running across the road like we had just discussed. But there was a group behind them that I got between in case he got out anyways. And when I was driving away in my rear view mirror, I could see once I went away, those other group that was st stuck on that side of the road 
ran across the road. So I don't know how close to Casey they were. They must have been pretty darn close to running him over, but they ran right by him. But like I said, I don't know where it's hard because like I got to drive far enough away that the goats aren't concerned with me. Oh, there's one right there. Look at this. See, I don't think they're concerned with me. That doe is literally 85 yards off the road, not even looking at me. Maybe it's a little buck. I think it's a doe. But anyways, that's what we got going on, folks. Um, I'm going to keep looking for Casey over there, but I can't see him from where I'm at. But anyways, yeah, I drive the truck far enough away, and the topography is like just over this rise. I can see a bunch of goats out there. I don't know if they're the same goats that Casey's stalking on or where Casey is, but... I'm just gonna keep looking over there and uh, we'll keep you updated. Found Casey and there's an antelope right there. It's that same doe. See how long it takes him to see her. He'll see her when she crosses the road. Feeding. Oh, check the surroundings. Thought I was an antelope. Nope, just me. Casey live here. They don't love it. <laughs> Here's the thing with this decoy. I was in hopes that I could jump out of the truck, look into drive, and I can show this to him. Like, oh, an antelope. Come closer, let me get closer. Not how it's gonna work. They have too much time to sit and watch me, and we're like, eh, that's not an antelope. That's something weird. I think where it can help is going on a legitimate stock where I'm hidden most of the time. And if something happens, they see something they don't like, I can use it to hopefully calm them down. Or like what we experienced the first time out here, get antelope in some topography where they're up on a hill and we sneak in on the base of the hill and we come up over the top. And instead of seeing me looking over the top, they see this and they give me enough time to range and get a shot off. But to jump out of the truck and expect to walk through this open stuff right at them with this, probably not gonna happen. I'll keep trying it. It's fun, but I don't know if it's going to be the most effective. But what I did notice is I jumped out of the truck. Half the group had ran across the road, so I was concentrating on them. There was a buck there, and there, there was three more antelope, which were obviously staring at me, trying to trick these things. And they ran across the road at like 60 yards, and they ran for a long time. They're so funny. When they want to cross the road, or they want to cross the road. that hit the water uh, the first one hit at like 11 o'clock a little after 11 and then there was a single buck that hit 
uh, just after 12 yesterday. So uh, decided we didn't have to get up, get in the blind before dark or before light. So it's about 7:45 right now. We're headed to the blind. Hopefully that group of bucks comes and hits the, the water again. Like I said, they hit just after 11 yesterday. Um, and maybe there were some goats that uh, were a little hesitant because of the blind that might come close but not come all the way to the water. We'll see. Uh, it should be an interesting day. We are going to commit to sitting this thing, though, um, for the better part of the day. We might get out and go take a nap for a little few hours, but I think we're going to try to be there for a couple hours this morning and then definitely like the last four hours of light this evening. Sitting in it. Did it just bounce? I closed all the windows. Yeah. Yards from the front of the tank, about 32 yards behind the tank. So 
I'm liking our play. There's a goat I'm watching right now. Looks like he's coming in. If anything, I just want to see some goats come in, get close, get some cool footage.
What just happened? Oh no. That was fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. That was so awesome. We have we have hunted antelope for day number six. Put a lot of stocks on, covered a lot of miles, learned a lot of things about antelope archery hunting. Um, I'm not kidding, I don't know why. Like I poured myself into shooting an antelope with my bow this year. I put in for the tag. It's an unlimited tag, anybody can get it. You just have to put in first choice. And I put it in and I thought, you know, if I have time, I'll go do it. And then wh whatever reason, I was like, I'm going to make this happen. Like, I'm, I'm going to make time for this hunt. I want to kill an antelope. We absolutely love antelope meat. And I've never hunted them with my bow before. And so, like I was saying earlier, um, I know about this area because me and my dad drew this tag uh, years ago for elk. We hunted elk, but we saw antelope everywhere. And I was like, man, guys should get an antelope tag over here. And this was 15 years ago. Maybe some of you guys wouldn't agree with that shot, but I shoot, I switched setups up last year and I started shooting a super heavy arrow, 565 grain arrow with a good broadhead and it will penetrate bone. And I watched, watched a lot of guys shoot antelope frontal with their head down or their head up, but full frontal, even if they're quartered hard because you can blow through that bone if you have the right setup. I shoot a pretty fast bow, um, the new Hoyt Venom, big arrow, big heavy arrow. So I was felt very confident. I, been shooting a lot at 35 yards and that's what he was and uh, I think it did the trick but how freaking neat was that <laughs>